did. Look, mister, I never saw you before. I never did anything to you. Oh, no, 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 please. I never did anything to anybody to deserve. Oh, help, help, help me. Oh, I'm burning. Oh, oh, stop it. Stop it. Help, help, help. Nothing is accomplished by prayer alone. We need two things to build the Sunday School Annex. The Lord's blessing and your contributions. The Lord has done his part. Now, let us see you do yours. While Deacon Thatcher and his assistants pass the collection trays, we will be honored by Master Herman Parker, who will render Rock of Ages on his violin. How did you like our little surprise? I was never so disgusted in my life. It sounded like a cat goggling razor blades. I thought Herman played very well. I did. I didn't miss a note. And you didn't miss showing this town that we're raising a weakling. I was against wasting money on fiddle lessons. We need it for other things. Music will give him character. It's making a sissy out of him, and nothing disgusts me more than a sissy. I ain't a sissy, Ma. I can clobber any kid my size around here. Did you ever clobber anyone? No. But I could if I wanted to. Herman isn't a sissy. He's strong as the other boys. Oh, is that so? Well, Herman was sawing that fiddle in church. What was the other boys doing? Listening. <laughs> Not on your life. Show them, boys. <laughs> Where did you get these? Out of the collection plate. Without anyone being the wiser. <laughs> that took guts. How long has this been going on? Oh, a couple of weeks. It was their own idea. I thought it was kind of cute. Pretty slick, eh, Pop? Last week we got over a dollar. What kind of a mother are you? Letting your son steal from church. Not letting them, George. Encouraging them. It's going to stop. No, it's going to continue. Because I've decided that's the only way they'll ever have anything. What can you give them? An education. An education. You had one. What good did it do you? Oh, I live a decent life. A decent life? Do you call patch pants, darn stockings, and this run-down flea bag a decent life? Well, we're, we're in a depression. Things will get better. You bet they will. 
Because I'm teaching my kids to take what they want. I'd rather they were fiddle players than crooks. Fiddle players? Ma, they'll be fiddle players over my dead body. Go practice on that. Bob, look what you've done. You're going to let her get away with that? Katie. Here, he's just like you, a sissy that won't fight back. I tell you, there's only one thing that's worth anything in this world, and that's guts. Aiming to teach my kids to show plenty of it. Lloyd, you get over by that box office and whistle if you see anybody coming. Got you. Herman, you get the money. How come I got to swipe the money? Because that's the way Ma planned it. And if you don't do what she says, she's going to beat the tar out of you. I don't care. I don't want to do it. All right, then. I'll do it. You do my job. Let's get going. Oh, the moon shines bright tonight on pretty red wings. Oh, the moon. Stands right on pretty red ring. Charlie, will you stop kicking around here and hit the hay? We gotta pull out of here tomorrow. Yes, sir. Reach right up there in that old sky and got me a whole handful of that moon. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm loaded with moonshine. Will you shut up and go to bed or I'll can you right here on the spot? Jail. Maybe the sheriff can get it out of you who that other kid was. Gee, you think Herman will blab? He's kind of chicken. I don't know, but we better get home and tell Ma. Yeah. Honey, why is it we're always at each other's throats? I don't know. I guess we just think differently. We didn't used to. No. We were something special. <laughs> What's that? Must be the boys coming home. Coming home at this hour in the morning? Katie? What's going on here? Tomorrow's a school day. Why don't you leave my boys to me? Ma? 
after a party called Herman. We were lucky. We didn't get caught. What, Carney? What loot? Where did you get the cash box? Will you shut up and let me handle this? Where's Herman now? The sheriff dragged him to jail. You mean Herman let himself get caught? Carney was too fast for him. The sheriff's got him now. Lousy 56 bucks. Chicken feed. Did you know about this, Ma? Well, of course I knew about it. I cased the setup and helped him plan it. For the love of heaven, Ma, what are you making out of our boys? I ain't got time to argue with you now. I gotta get down to that sheriff's office and get Herman out. That's stealing. Just as sure as there's a God in heaven, Ma, you're gonna be struck down for what you're teaching our sons. Ah, shut up. You're not going to town in that get up. Well, what else would a worried mother wear when she reports her kidnapped son to the police? Oh. <laughs> We go on and watch the fun. You boys get to bed. Oh, come on, Pop. Let's catch the fun. Get to bed. Should have asked Mom. She wears a pants in the family. It's all a mistake, Ma. This guy says I was in on a heist. A heist? What is that? Do you know, Ma? Stealing. My goodness, I hope you don't think my boys have been stealing. That's right, lady. Where are your other boys, Mrs. Barker? Why, they're home at bed, of course. Been there all night? Why, certainly they have. They're growing boys, and I insist that they get to bed every night at 8.30. I don't know what got into Herman wandering around so late at night like this. How'd you know he'd be here? Well, I didn't know. I went into his room to see if he was covered up. He's had the sniffles, you know. And he was gone. Not having a phone, not knowing which way to turn, I came running down here to see if you could help me. Look, Sheriff, I'm out 150 bucks, and I want you to do something about it. My goodness, it don't seem like that carnival took in that much business. How would you know, lady? That'll be enough, you two. Mrs. Barker, it's beginning to look like your boy is mixed up in the theft of this man's money. Well, I don't see how that could be. I've always raised my sons to be honest and God-fearing. <laughs> Why, they go to church every Sunday. I'm not interested in whether they go to church or not, Mrs. Barker. Fact of the matter is, your boys are under suspicion for several other robberies around here. That's a lie! That's a fact, Mrs. Barker. And if I hear about their being mixed up in anything else around here, I'm gonna run you and your brood right out of town. We'll talk about police persecution. You're nothing more than... That'll be all, Mrs. Barker. Now take your brat and get out of here. You gonna prosecute this little crook? On the evidence you've given me? What about this kid starting up my merry-go-round? Oh, by the way, my good man, here's a quarter for my boy's ride. I don't want you to think I'm ungrateful. Come along, sweetheart. Numbskull, you got caught. That's what you did. Doc was supposed to start the merry-go-round, and you were supposed to take the money. I was scared, Ma. Next time, don't try to change my plans. I won't, Ma. Honest. Don't get caught. Understand? Don't get caught. Don't worry, Ma. I won't. Ever again. Better not let Ma catch you with that fiddle. She said I could have it. She even said I could have a new one. Yeah, if you got enough guts to steal the money to get it. All right, boys. Time for school. Oh, Ma, we gotta go to school? Of course you do. You could write the principal we're sick. And let him think my kids are sickly. You could write that Grandma was dead. Grandma was buried ten years ago. So what? We could dig her up and have another funeral. <laughs> That ain't funny. Ouch. This story in the newspaper isn't very funny either. Thieves broke into the office of the Wilder Carnival last night and made off with over $300. A cheapskate. Herman Barker, son of Mr. and Mrs. George Barker. You're famous! <laughs> there it is in black and white for the whole town to see. Well, what's wrong with that? It says here they didn't have enough evidence. 
That sheriff can't pin anything on my boys. Herman is innocent. <laughs> I'm going to give you boys a whipping that's long overdue. I'll show you who's head of this house. Look out! Katie, we're going to have an understanding right now. You bet we are. We're going to decide which way our boys are going. I've already decided. The way you're leading, they'll all wind up in prison. Not my boys. I have to choose between dying in prison or dying in the poorhouse. There's not much choice between them. Katie, what makes you so hard? What makes you so dead set against law and order? It's not the law I hate. Li living my whole life and growing old and dying and never having anything or seeing anything. Of being anything. There's millions like us. Not like me, there ain't. I grew up in a family of ten kids. Wormy corn pone. Watered gravy. Katie, the Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by... Oh, stop it. That's why I was always so scrawny. Too much Bible and too little beef. Too many psalms and too little sow belly. I was the sick of the litter. When I did get any dresses, they was faded from washing, worn from wearing, with frizzly hems from too much letting down. My toes played this little piggy through every cheap pair of cotton stockings I ever had. George, did you ever wear bloomers? Katie, we're talking about the boys. I'm talking about bloomers. My bloomers. from seven sisters. And my playmates used to love to shove me down on the playground so my dress would fly up and you could see old homestead flower written across my bottom. A girl doesn't forget those things. Katie. The soul can rise above any pain or shame. Oh, you mealy mouther. What good's a soul without a body to carry it around in? And the body needs food. And food takes money. And how much money do you bring into this house? <laughs> Jobs are scarce. The boys can steal more in one week than you can make in a month. <laughs> Money isn't everything. Every time you do get a few bucks ahead, you spend it on some stupid thing like a book or a dog or fiddle lessons. There's nothing disgraceful about being poor. Some of our greatest Americans came from poverty. Take Abraham Lincoln. Oh, if I ever take a Lincoln, it won't be an Abraham. It'll be a 16-cylinder job that'll take me out of this place at night, he per. You wanted an understanding, well, you're gonna get it. We don't need your chicken feet. We don't need you. So why don't you beat it? Why don't you take your things and get out of here? Take me with you, please. Son, I'll send for you. Now, you say the Chinaman keeps his money here on the floor of the laundry? Yeah, Ma, it's in the barrel. Barrel? Yeah, you should hear him. Every time we go in there, he says, When bellow sheet full, no more lonely. Me go back to China. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got news to that Chinaman. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now, let's be serious.
Well, boys, I... Boys, say goodbye to your father. We'll be seeing you. Have a good trip. Don't take any wooden nickels. Just running us out of town because we're poor. I'm running you out of town, Mrs. Barker, because you robbed the Chinaman, but I can't prove it. Why, you're worse than a Bolsheviki. Just wait till I write my congressman about you. Denying the rights of an honest citizen. A poor widow woman at that. Where will we go? I don't know, Mrs. Barker, but the further the better. And don't you come back, because if you do, I'll put you and your whole brood in jail. Sticks and stones may break our bones. Names will never hurt us. And so we drove into a future unprejudiced against childish pranks. Years passed and my boys grew into fine young men. How was our rehearsal, Ma? Lloyd, it was lousy. Ma, we gonna do the job tomorrow? No, Doc, we're too rusty. We're gonna rehearse it a few more times. Oh, Ma, look, I'm tired of rehearsing. Herman, you need it the most. As the armored car reaches this point, I come tearing out of here like I'm out of control. I cut in ahead of him. And the guards kill you with machine guns fire. Now, who'd shoot an innocent old lady all alone in her car? Before they have recovered from their surprise. Herman cuts in behind and blocks them. I jump out and shoot tear gas through that side port. When that front guard opens up, I let him have it. Fine. Herman? Well, I come down the other side. When the driver gets out... Go on. Well, I knock him out. You kill him, Herman. And don't chicken out. Don't you worry about Herman. He may be squeamish, but he always does his part. Lloyd? I stay in the second car and drop the guard when he unbuttons the rear door. What if he doesn't open up, Doc? I grab the guard's keys, unlock the rear door, swing it open, and jump back. I spray the inside with a full clip. Us boys grab the money. And we make our getaway as planned and rehearsed.
Hand me that machine gun. Drunk again, Art. The gentleman does not get drunk. He becomes inebriated. Ah, you skunk. Ma, when are you going to get rid of this boom town? Oh, he's harmless. Besides, I'm married to him. <laughs> Until death do us part. Say, don't go giving me ideas. <laughs> Boys. What do you want? I was wondering if I might have my portion of that king's ransom. Oh, yeah. Here's a half a sawbuck. Back down to the speakeasy and finish getting fried. Well, at least the tavern keeper is an articulate conversationalist. Yeah. Well, just be sure you don't say nothing you shouldn't. That is, Art, unless you uh, want to wake up stone dead someday. Oh, my lips are sealed. Look, Ma, you're pretty smart. But that old coot, he's gonna get us in a jam one of these days. Just you wait and see. Well, if I'm wrong about him, I'll get rid of him. Well, how much do you think we got? About 15,000. Well, you said we get about twice that much. Oh, well, stop crying. We got more than enough to get Freddy out of the big house. Get me an envelope. Hurry. You're not gonna send 10 grand through the mails, are you, Ma? Of course not. Herman's taking it. Why me? Well, Doc might spend it on dames. Lloyd might throw a party. And you haven't got the nerve to do anything less than I tell you. Well, look, Ma, ten grand, that makes Fred a little expensive and leaves us a little short, don't it? Don't no, fret. This is chicken feed to what we're gonna get. You're planning a big one, Ma? Yep. And I'll tell you about it when I get good and ready. Now, I gotta write Freddie and... Let him know he's getting sprung. and read a letter from home? It ain't a mouse, it's a hamster. Read the letter. Might be good news. <laughs> What'd you get shipped? Connections? Put it away. Read the letter. L. L, I'm getting sprung. Ma's already put up the money. I wish I had a Ma like that. She's throwing a big blow off for me when I get home. I'll be there. Stop dreaming. You got two years to go. Hi, Alvin Carpus. They shorten your hitch for digging coal. All the coal you could dig, I could stick in my ear. I got organization. The lifers are digging for me. They're not going anywhere. I slip them candy, cigarettes, money. Now, I'd like you. You got brains. Yeah, Freddy. But more important than brains. Guts. What'd you do that for? Everything squeals when it dies. Pigs, calves, people. I never heard a hamster squeal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, Ma like you real good. Ma, what's uh, what's Machine Gun Kelly doing coming here anyway? Well, it seems Dillinger and Babyface Nelson did a pretty good job. So Kelly wants me to plan a kidnap. A kidnap? 
That's crazy, Ma. The FBI, they'll ring us out like dish rags. Oh, we don't handle the body. Kelly takes that risk. Well, that's different. Hey, uh, you suppose he'll bring that living doll of a girlfriend with him? You lay off her. She's ten cents a yard material. But beautiful. But stupid. But beautiful. But stupid. Now lay off her. No games. Honey, why give our good money to an old bag? I've already planned the deal. Ma's the best in the business. I'm as smart as Ma Barker. You know, the trouble with you is when you look at me, all you think of is, is this. You never take time to find out what's up here. Yeah. Well, let's see what Ma's price is. I, um, uh, I hear she has body by a fisher. Man. Any fisher man knows he'll get stuck if he fools around with a hook. Come in. Come in. All right. Hiya, Ma. Hello, Kelly. Oh, uh, this is my girlfriend, Lou. Oh. Well, pleased to meet you. Come on in. This is my boy, Doc. He's quite a ladies' man. Lou, honey, let's get lost while Ma and Kelly talk business. Huh? <laughs> oh, Kelly. <laughs> no wonder you like to take Lou with you wherever you go. Well, I don't get you, Ma. She leads real easy. You're much older than I thought. May I call you Grandma? I ain't a grandma yet. I keep my boys away from the likes of you. <laughs> hey, Lou, honey. Ma sure topped you that time. Appears to me like Lou's the kind of a girl who's always getting topped. Well, let's get down to business. You want to plan a kidnap with a man named Jackson. How did you know that? Never mind. He ain't got a dime. Well, he certainly has. He's a millionaire. His home is mortgaged. His car ain't paid for. He gets 20000 a year. And his wife's jewels are all in hock. I don't believe it. Oh, honey. Just because you had a few dates with him while his wife was out of town. That's a lie. She was there all the time. Yikes. Yeah. Some girlfriend you got, Kelly. Well, Mother, it was part of casing the job. I'll plan your job with fatter fish. How much? Fifty grand. Why, you old battle axe, we wouldn't give oh, you... Oh, sweet child. You say that again, and I'll rattle your tonsils till that mink turns into the rabbit it is. I got no time for cheats or pony blondes. <laughs> Why, him and me was uh, uh, classmates at Kansas State. Uh, did you get the dough we sent? Sure, how do you think I'm paying for this party? Machine gun Kelly should have talked to you before he snatched Jackson. Oh? What happened? The guy didn't have a crying dime. What did you do with the skinny fish? They had to throw him back. Say, who all is here tonight? Well, there's, uh, Balney Davis, Big Fitz, and, uh, Homer Van Meter. Excuse me, I want to talk to... Somebody. I guess you heard. We took a leaf from your book. Not my book. It ain't written yet. But when it is, it won't have a stupid chapter like that Jackson job you pulled. Can't a girl make one mistake? Like breathing? Honey, I'll still be around when you're worm bait. They'll have awful tough chewing. Honey, I hope you won't feel out of place here tonight. Well, no, why should I? I reckon you've never met any big shots. Oh, I've been around. Yeah, in circles, 
the gang and robbed a jewelry store. Then Lou said, Joey, I want a coat of sable, something fancy with a genuine label. But little Joe's luck was bad that day. He killed a cop to make his getaway. Little Joe was captured and landed in jail. He waited for Lou to put up his bail. But Lou's fickle fancy had taken a turn to her new boyfriend. She said, let him burn. In his lonely cell, he said, I gotta make a break. I'm going stir crazy. I've had all that I can take. One thing I gotta do before I die is make her pay for having another guy. Joe made his escape with a smuggled in saw. Just one step ahead of the law. When he caught up to Lou, he had murder in his eye. Tearfully, she pleaded, I'm too young to die. His smile was cold and deadly as he shot his girlfriend Lou. That's the last time you'll trifle on little Joe Carew. I know I'll get the hot seat, but one thing I gotta say. The lesson that I've learned in life is crime. Don't pay. Uh. Now, how about Lloyd? Here's the rest of the story about little Joe Carew on trial for life for killing his gal friend Lou. The judge said, little Joe, you're public enemy number one. And now you'll have to pay and pay for what you've done. Little Joe protested, said, I'm not to blame. The way she treated me was a low-down shame. Judge pounded with his gavel, said, look me in the eye. Tearfully, Joe pleaded, I don't want to die. The judge was cold and solemn as he looked at Joe Carew. I sentence you to die for killing your girlfriend, Lou. Maybe she'll be waiting at the pearly gates. Take him to the hot seat and chalk it up to fate. So ends the story about little Joe Carew. He's left this world to meet his girlfriend, Lou. All right, bud. Don't muss the fur. You know, I'm kind of stuck on that fur. But if I have to work you over, you're going to become mighty unstuck. Listen, you'd better take it easy, fella. Big as you are, you've got a long ways to fall. Look, friend. Nobody puts the rush on Machine Gun Kelly's girl. Now, now, Kelly, you want to shoot it out with Johnny Dillinger, you better go outside. Don't you go messing around with my new furniture. <laughs> Dillinger? You heard the name? Yeah, sure, who hasn't? S say, you know, what I was saying about my baby doll, I mean, a lot of guys make passes at her. And I bet she don't drop a single one. <laughs> hey, that's a good one, Johnny. Huh, baby? <laughs> well, that was close. Why did Ma go and stop there? I would like to see what would happen. A little action. Ah, you've had enough. Of ever. So have you. Watch it. Aye. I'll lay you ten to five that Dillinger could take him without mussing a hair. Ow! So you made it. I told you I would. Ma! 
Ma, this here's Al Carpus. Hi, Ma. Well, Al Carpus, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Red's told me a lot about you, and if it's half as good as he says, you're okay in my book. What he'd tell you, I was a fine, upstanding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> Ma, imagine this guy. When we were in prison, he organizes a Boy Scout troop to help him shovel coal. Al? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they did their good turn. <laughs> <laughs> Have you located yet, Al? No, no, not yet. Why don't you come in with us? Huh, Ma? Sure, Al, sure. We'd be glad to have you. Yeah. Where are your boys, Ma? Oh, well, it's Lloyd over there. Doc and Herman are out on business. Oh. Huh? Said he should have been back a long time ago. Fred, go get Al a drink. Dig out, I'm right behind you. Hey, kid. Come on, I'll help you. No, 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 go on. I make up right behind you. Is he hurt? Not anymore, Ma. He shot himself. Oh, no. Right. Right through the head. Why'd he do a stupid thing like that? It was my fault. I always told him, don't get caught. He wasn't as strong as my boy. Oh, my boy. My boy. When can I see him? Most likely tomorrow. I'll take him back home. But, Ma, the sheriff told us never to come back. He better not show no objections to a mother going back home to bury her own. <sighs> he is like a man which built a house and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it. It was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. To thy keeping we commit the soul of Herman Barker. From dust thou art made and to dust thou shalt return. Amen. Katie, Katie, this didn't have to happen. Oh. 
If only you'd been a better father. told him. I see. No, we're leaving right now. Thanks a lot. Boys, get Arthur's bags and load everything back in the car. Why, who's that, Ma? Big Fitz says someone shot off his mouth at the speakeasy. The cops know it was you with her. Oh, bourbon breath? Who else? Let me carve him, Ma. Not here. We'll stop for a little picnic between here and St. Paul. St. Paul? That the big one, Mom? Get those things loaded in there. I'll talk about it later. Hmm? Yeah, all right. Arthur, right. right. I'm going to enjoy hearing you squeal. Come on. Yep. Come on. Ma, you're the best cook that ever lived. Your turkey cooks moist, never dry. Yeah, Ma, she's pretty good on uh, cooking gooses, too. She even baked you a pie. Al, Ma's won prizes at the county fair. Not only for, for baking, for cooking, too. <laughs> Carpets have a piece of pie. No, thanks. I've had mine. Ready? Lloyd? Duck. Why be so stingy with it? So you'll have time to eat. The others are larger. They'll be around longer. They didn't shoot off their mouths at the bar. Ma, now, I don't didn't... you go trying to deny it. I told Al and the boys that if you shot off your bourbon mouth at that bar and got us in Dutch, I was going to finish you. I was going to do something about it. Now finish your pie. Oh, now, Ma, Ma you... <laughs> you wouldn't do anything foolish. Not to me. What? Well, after all, I'm your... Ah, I'm your husband. I'm just about to divorce you. The quick way. Ma? Well... Consider it a favor you let me do it. Mm-hmm. Let's draw straws. By right, it's my job. I'm the oldest. Don't seem right, you doing it. You being your own flesh and blood. Not ours, Al. Ma found and married this guy about five years ago. Wait a minute. I got a better idea. Doc, give me that gun. Russian roulette. Ma, you are the slickest ever. Al, even money gets it before the third shot. You got a $10 bet, Fred. No, Ma. No. Here. I'll help you. You're pretty weak, old man. Let me help you. Better luck next time.
made ten bucks. It wasn't worth it. Why not? Didn't have much chance to squeal. Nelson, you tell Davidson and Van Meter to do exactly what I planned. Where do we bring your cut? Listen, baby face, you show up around here and I'll kill you. You don't bring it, you send it. You wrap the amount I said in white paper and mail it to me. If we bring it off. You do it exactly like I planned it. My job's always come off. Babies in this business. Carpus, Nelson, and the others moved into the Sioux Falls Bank. Right on schedule. They took their places. Right on schedule. The vault was open. Right on schedule. Shooting the cop was not on the schedule. Everything's under control here. Take your time. They collected $50,000 and made their getaway right on schedule. I was right proud of them. It was nice of you to select our bank, Mrs. Henderson. Well, after Mr. Stilwell and the bank in St. Louis recommended you so highly, I just couldn't think of going to another bank. Since my dear, dead, departed husband. Drink this, Mrs. Anderson. We've all suffered the loss of a loved one. Thank you. I do hope I like St. Paul. Of course, living with my sister has its drawbacks. Her home's way out near the Hamlin School. My daughter attends Hamlin School. What a lovely child. Thank you. Now, how can we serve you? I would like to liquidate my holdings in St. Louis and invest here in St. Paul. I see. Well, our real estate department should be of service. Meanwhile, I'd like to have a safety deposit box. I'll have my secretary arrange that. Oh. You've been so kind. Now, if there's anything you want, Mrs. Henderson, I hope you'll think of our bank. I will. Indeed, I will. This is the surprise you're going to spring, Ma? Nope. It's the Commercial State Bank. If you're going off your rocker, Ma, it's the toughest bank in the country to crack. He's right, Ma. Be lucky to get a handful of nickels out of that joint. Yeah, how about a boat, huh? Who said anything about money? Well, what are we going to do, swipe the pens and blotters? <laughs> nah. We're going to snatch the president. It's a federal rap, Ma. You want the FBI on our tail? Ain't I always told you it takes guts to make a bundle? Like how much, Ma? 200,000. That's a lot of scratch, Ma. It'll be red hot. Yeah, well, I can trade it for some cool cabbage in Chicago, Miami, and Reno. <laughs> we'll write you from Alcatraz. <laughs> now, listen to me, Carpus. Listen to me! On Monday morning at 10.15, you and Doc will leave this place. You will drive to the Hamlin School at the corner of 6th and Washington. And pick up our diplomas. You will park on 6th Street near the east entrance. Within three minutes, Courtney will arrive. You hope? He will. Because I'm going to call him and tell him his little girl is took sick at school and he's to come and get her. And he's going to ask, how sick is she? Nothing serious, just an upset stomach. 
But we thought it best if she was home in bed. Have you called Mrs. Courtney? We tried to, but your phone is out of order. I see. Very well, I'll come and pick her up right away. Thank you. Miss Chase, I'll be back in about an hour. on yourself, Mrs. Courtney. If they harm him. They won't if you follow instructions explicitly. <laughs> That's why you must take this phone call with as much calm as possible. It's after 9 o'clock. I can't go through with it. I'll do something stupid and fail him. I thought when the FBI came in, they would handle everything. We must have your cooperation, Mrs. Courtney. You'll be fine. Hello? Yes? This is Mrs. Courtney. Now listen carefully, because I don't want to repeat myself. Put the money in a small package and take it to the end of the Font Street Wharf. Yes. Yes, is my husband all right? Don't worry about him. Just have the money ready. When I get to the wharf, what shall I do? A speedboat will come by. A man will call your name. Give him the money. Yes, I will. Please don't hurt him. We... I need him so. You can have him. We're honorable people, Mrs. Courtney. You keep your word, we'll keep ours. Relax, Ma. Worrying won't help. According to the schedule, they're two hours overdue. So they had a flat. They'll be here. And it don't take two hours to fix a flat? Besides, they had three spare tires, just in case. Listen, Ma. That ain't our car. I tell by the sound. Fred, hurry. You go in the house. You know what to do. like it, don't it? How did you know where to find us? We heard some rumors, Ma, and we put two and two together. Let's cut out the hearts and flowers. No, we knew this was your job. We know how you work. All right, boys. Lou, are you pulling another Jackson boner? I bubble that. But this time, I've got you outsmarted. It does look bad, don't it? What's your proposition? We kind of figured to take Courtney off your hands, Mom. Are you offering any cash? Of course we are. Lou figured we'd pay about... Not one red cent. But, honey, you said 50 grand. That was before we found Ma alone. I never heard of such a thing. Trying to steal another mob's kidnap. Why, it ain't honest. You're in no spot to refuse, Ma. Do you want to gamble on that? Can you be four of a kind? 
Depends on how big they are. I'd call them aces. Oh, honey, you've never been known to be very bright. <laughs> they look more like jokers to me. You're slipping, Ma. A joker is still an ace. Not in Texas poker. We strip out the joker, and that's just what I'm going to do with your fat hand. Fred! That's a pretty low card, Ma. Maybe I better draw another. Carpus! You better draw your limit, Ma, and fast. I'm losing patience. Baby face nose. And if Fred and Carpus and baby face and me ain't enough, then I got a wild card. A real wild card. Johnny Dillinger. Fives beat fours. I'd say Ma has the best hand. After this, folks will be calling you Pop Gun Kelly. <laughs> yeah, they sure will, Ma. But you, like I always said, you're the best in the business. I'll bet you do, Kelly. Boys, put up your hardware. You mean lay down their hardware, don't you? Well, I guess we can't do business, so uh, we'll be on our way. Now, is that any way for a guest to act? You're staying to dinner. Bad? Pick up those boys' guns. They're getting right dusty laying there on the ground. Well, why'd you do that? Well, I saw it move, and I didn't want it to bite you. What's he doing here, Ma? Kelly heard that we kidnapped somebody. I declare, I don't know how those rumors get around. <laughs> kidnapped? <laughs> now, that's a laugh. Did you get the lettuce like I told you? Yeah, it's in the back seat. Good. Take the car around in back. And put the lettuce in the icebox. We'll have some for supper. <laughs> Darling, these are the nice men I told you about. Avery, sir. Mr. Avery? Baxter, Mr. Baxter. I know you've had a harrowing experience, Mr. Courtney, so I'll be as brief as possible. Thank you. I am very tired. Do you have any idea who your abductors were? I was blindfolded the whole time, and they only talked in whispers in my presence. Can you tell us where they took you? No, I can't. Can you estimate the length of time you traveled? It was hours. Four, five, eight. Hmm. Well, I'd say roughly about eight hours. Do you recall any unusual sounds? No, just the incessant whir of the tires on the highway. When we'd been traveling for about six hours, the sound changed. Changed? To what? The way tires sound when you're driving on wet pavement. Rain. Within a radius of 300 miles, we'll check on that. Can you tell us when they stopped for gas? They didn't. That is not at a filling station. Before we hit the wet pavement, they turned off on a side road, poured gas into the tank from a metal container. I could hear them toss the can to the side of the road. Very good, Mr. Courtney. I was placed in a cellar or a basement. I think it was very damp. I could hear cows, ducks, chickens. A lot of hammering. Oh, I could hear a railroad train several times a day. How far away was the sound? Mm, it seemed to be about two miles away. Well, this gives us something concrete to work on. Thank you very much, Mr. Courtney. If we need any further information, we'll be in touch with you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Good night, Miss Courtney. Good night. Good night. Good night. Darling, were they rough with you? No, they treated me well. I had water, cigars. Did they feed you? Are you hungry? That's the only part of the whole thing I really enjoyed. Enjoyed? The meals. That cook served the best food I've ever tasted. Wish I had one of those cherry pies right now. 
This is the only place it rained that day. I want the area covered. We'll use as many men as necessary. Find the road where that car pulled off to put in gas. And there we should find that empty gas can. you in the paper. <laughs> yeah, it's a good picture, too. Then you know we're in real trouble, Doc. So you get your tools, because you got a little operation to do. Yeah. What kind of operation? You'll find out soon enough. Maybe plastic surgery. I haven't done any plastic surgery for years. Well, you're gonna do one now. Maybe you'll get that old diploma back, Doc. Now get your tools. Yeah, yeah. Wait, look, my hand. Take something for them. And do it fast, will you? Because when Ma gets here, she won't like it if you botch this job. Now get your tools. <laughs> Look, Ma, you better get somebody else. My nerves are shot, and besides, I never specialized in surgery. All right, Doc. Take a good big drink. Now, don't get polluted. I love my boy. And if you don't do a good job, I'll give you the same operation. Without ether. This is no time for jokes. I haven't told a joke in 20 years. Ma. Ma, is this gonna hurt? No, son, no. We'll just put you to sleep, and when you come to, it'll all be over. Ma, I don't mind about the fingerprints, but do I have to change the face? Every post office in this country has a picture of your face. Now, don't you worry, son. Don't you worry. Your ma will take care of you. Just like she always does. Touch you butcher. You're hurting my boy. Give me another slug. You've had enough. Take over? <laughs> Old Doc Gulfy. Sawbones to the underworld. Ah! Now you stop that. You're hurting my boy. Mm -hmm. Give him some more ether. You know, Ma, that's pretty funny. <laughs> I used it all. <laughs> oh, stop that. You're hurting him. Well, let it oh. hurt. You talk about your boys having guts, well, let it hurt. <laughs> Doc said to take it easy. I'm hurting my own son. No, Ma, you're doing fine. Hey, you know, if I like what that doc did, I'm gonna have him make me look like Valentino. Huh? Oh, oh. Uh, my fingers! Oh, I'm sorry, son. I'll take it easy. What's wrong, Ma? What did he do to me? Do nothing. Not a thing. You mean I look just like I did? Hey, he let you suffer all those weeks for nothing. That dirty, stinking butch mom! No, 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 please, I never did anything to anybody to deserve... Oh, it's Ma. 
It's my partner. Oh, please, mister, I'll get lost. Anything. Oh, no! no. Help! 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 Help me! Why, man? Oh, oh, stop it! Stop it! How could they be sure this was Dr. Gelfi? Well, his wallet wasn't burned. And the initials on the back of his watch, it's pretty conclusive. How do you interpret this? Gangland vendetta? But if his medical services were so valuable to the underworld, why would they rub him out? Well, it was on the skids. Over parrot fever, yakking too much. Could have been the Barker gang. They went to Dr. Gelfi for a facelifting and rubbed him out so there'd be no witnesses. Do you think the Barker gang would engage in this sort of thing? Why not? This is the work of animals. They're all animals when they're on the run. And there's a chance some members of the gang may have had their features altered, so we won't be able to recognize them. Well, they may alter their features, but they very seldom change their habits. Sooner or later, one of them will tip his hand. Yeah. Nelson. Hi, Nelson. Hiya, Kelly. Where is Dylan, you and Van Meter? They couldn't make it. Uh, want a drink? Yeah. Where's Lou? Take her back. She'll be out in a second. What's in your mind? The biggest kidnap in history. You'll have to go some to beat the Barker job. You, you figure a quarter of a million dollars will beat it? It might, if it comes off. Who set it up? We did. You're kidding. After that Jackson goop, you couldn't cop a bag of marbles at a dime store. We try to get Ma Barker to mastermind the job, but she wants 50 Gs. It's worth it. In advance, I've got a better idea. I'll get Doc Barker. Yeah? And he's just as smart as Ma. And a lot cheaper. But the G heat's on him. You can't get him. I'll get him. Yeah, maybe you will at that. And I'll get even with Ma Barker in the bargain. Honey. Will you help us? Honey, I'm still hot from that Courtney job. Oh, think of the fun we could have. Are you kidding? You know Kelly would never go for this arrangement. And Ma, Ma, she would skin me alive. Hook me. Honey, it's so hot. Can I tell Kelly you're in? All the way. I've had my eye on you for a long time, Doc. Don't leave. I'm just going to call Kelly. Well, don't you tell him that uh, I agree. I'll tell him you'll give him an answer next week. I'll be right back. Get your nickel, hon. You don't have to knock. <laughs> We've always been told it was the right thing to do. I thought you were somebody else. Obviously. At this point, we usually frisk for concealed weapons, but uh, I think we can waive the procedure this time. You been uh, entertaining, Doc? Doc? What's Doc? My name's Austin Bennett. Well, at least the initials are the same. Stretch out and be comfortable. Wasn't that Machine Gun Kelly's girl who just left? Now, look, you guys. You just can't barge in here like this with your guns drawn and call me false names 
and accused me of playing around with Lou. Oh, is that her name? We didn't know. Look, uh, who'd you guys mistake me for anyway, huh? Hasn't anyone ever confused you with Doc Barker, the notorious robber and kidnapper? Doc Barker? No, I never heard of that guy. I'm sorry. Now, can I get dressed? It's too hot. Stay comfortable. Look, you got a search warrant? You know it's illegal to read somebody's private mail? Well, if you'd care to dress and come down to headquarters with us to press charges. Well, I ought to. Just on principle. Listen to this. You'd get a kick out of Ma. She spends all her time feeding old Joe the alligator. This is as good as a map. Where's the envelope? There wasn't no envelope. Fred's rich now, you know. He sent that by taxi. All the way from Florida? Montana. What's a Florida alligator doing in Montana? Maybe he fell in love with a buffalo. Now, look, you guys are wasting your time. I'm going to get dressed. Either you book me or let me go. All right. Get dressed. We'll take you with us, Doc. All right. I'll, uh, I'll leave Lou a note. Yeah, you do that. In the meantime, I'll get out a general bulletin to all alligator farms and tourist courts. Look out for an alligator named Joe. Yeah, boy. You guys, uh... Sure throw the taxpayers' money around, don't you? Uh, true, Doc. True. Why, why, even right now, I'm planning to spend some on a train trip to Florida. Because I got a strong hunch I'll find me a barker named Fred, an alligator named Joe, and a werewolf named Ma. We'd worked hard, so the stockholders declared a dividend, split the 200000 and scattered. Fred and I chose Florida. It's so lovely in winter. How was your walk? Lousy. What's the matter with you, son? You've been moody for days. Ma. You always wanted to be somebody and have a lot of money. Okay, you got both. Why don't we quit? I always kind of hope to retire. Might be kind of fun at that. Traveling first class, living good. Giving my grandkids a ride on my foot. Let's do it, Ma. It's my call to Doc. Hello? Oh, yes, operator. What? He checked out? When? A week ago. Did he leave any message? Any forwarding address? I see. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you know, Doc, it's some dame. Not. They got him. Otherwise, he would have given me a message. Now get in there and get back. That's the place. Well, let's move in. Against the bark as you move by inches on your belly. We'll wait. We got a carload of agents coming up. You can't make a reputation that way. No, a little newspaper publicity wouldn't hurt come next election. Hey. They're loading suitcases into the car. Yeah, damn. Sheriff, you, you cover that shack over there. Your deputy can work his way into those weeds out front. Avery and I will take the side in the back. Give us five minutes. Well, suppose they move out before you get into position. Well, the closest men take them. But don't trust them. Stay low and shoot straight. Not quite. Then get moving. I smell cops. Ma, I'm tired of running. It's run for safety or walk to the hot seat. Either way, we keep moving. Fred, Ma Barker, we're officers of the Department of Justice. We want you to come out one at a time. Unless you come out, we'll use tear gas to force you out. Get us! Oh, my fingers are still sore. 
Ma, we don't get, we don't have a chance. Oh, yes, we have. So let's either shoot our way out of here or rot in prison. You hear us, Ma? You can't surround a house with one man. Sound off, man. Here. Go who? Ready. Okay, Chief. Ready. Ready. In place. <sighs> Real tricky. Four men trying to sound like eight. Four to two, Ma. We haven't got a chance. I'm gonna quit. Now, wait a minute. Listen. There's one man out in front in the weeds. Another one outside here in the shed. I got enough. These are... You're up to something. We should have split one and one with the local law. Those boys don't know how tricky Ma can be. It's too late to do anything about that now. what I think it does. The odds are even now. Run for it. His mind's all over. It's all over. Not by a damn sight. It's two to two. I'll work around and cover the front. Let's make a sieve out of this place. Ma, I gotta quit. <laughs> Get back to that window while I change this clip. Please give up. If we surrender, at least we'll be alive. You gutless punk! You're as yellow as your old man! We're gonna get killed. Stop shaking and start shooting. I'll drill you myself. Ma, you don't know what you're saying. You've gone crazy. I'd rather see my sons dead than know that one of them was a coward. <laughs>
know the old witch, you'd swear she was just somebody's sweet old grandmother. Yeah, like the wolf in Red Riding Hood. Epitaphs of the Turbulent Thirties. Suicide to avoid capture, Herman Barker. Killed resisting arrest, Ma Barker, Fred Barker. Killed trying to escape Alcatraz, Doc Barker. Murdered by a jealous girlfriend, Lloyd Barker. Sentenced to life imprisonment, Alvin Carpus, Machine Gun Kelly. For as a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. None left his mark, each left his stain. Thank you. 